We are here in Fort Worth, Texas, where today the Defense Secretary of the United States, Robert Gates, came to see the F-35 run right here behind me. It's the Joint Strike Fighter. It's the biggest Pentagon weapons program in history. He came here to get an update on its progress. He's made a big bet on this plane in the current defense budget. He came to get, an, get a sense of where it stands right now. And uh, we spoke with the Defense Secretary about the budget, the defense budget, his efforts to overhaul defense spending the way the Pentagon does business. He's He's been pushing for changes in the current defense pro, uh, budget that is up on Capitol Hill. We talk with him about it. The key is getting control of this acquisition process, making sure that programs are executed according to the budgets that have been established for them and on the timelines established. Now, again, the secretary focused on trying to overhaul the defense budget, how the Pentagon prioritizes things in the future. He is making a big bet on this plane, a $300 billion program over the course of this contract. That's the projection. We're going to learn more about this plane, what the secretary hopes will become the backbone of America's tactical aviation fleet. And joining me right now is Robert Powell. He's the director of production operations here for Lockheed Martin on this plane. Robert, thank you for the time. Appreciate it. And thank you. Uh, it's very rare, perhaps the first time that Americans have really gotten a chance to see this plane up close like this. Tell me how this plane revolutionizes, if you will, uh, aviation going forward, the production of this. This is very different from anything we've seen before. Right. Obviously, this is the first multi-world, multi-service, supersonic stealth fighter ever produced. We're building on a, uh, here in the Fort Worth factory, factory that's a mile long, a quarter mile wide. And the difference you're going to see with this jet versus uh, some of the legacy aircraft starts with a digital thread, the materials that we use, and then the manufacturing processes that we're using. For example, the moving line. The first time a moving line has been used on a, uh, an aircraft of this type. The moving Let me stop you there. Digital thread. What do you mean by that? When we make an uh, when F-16 was first made back in the 1970s, made here, in fact, That's right. very different than this digital. You're able to basically mock this up digitally. That's right, 3D. The F-16 was more hard tooling. Um, with, had to be you know, used master tooling, hard tooling, different manufacturing processes than we're using on the, this jet. All right, and this is a working factory right now, yet it's very quiet. I expected to hear rivets being pounded in, that sort of thing. It's very quiet because why? A big difference, you know, not only the technology and the design of the aircraft, but also the equipment and the automation that we're using. Uh, we've gone away from the old, uh, the rivets and the, the bucking the rivets as far as a, from a uh, fastening system on this aircraft. We use a, a different fastening system that doesn't require the, the bucking and the noise, as well as the, the machinery, that, re, machinery that we're using today being much quieter, uh, also more technologically advanced. Uh, not only is it more effective and efficient to build the aircraft, but also from an ergon ergonomic standpoint with our employees. All right, I'm looking right now, maybe our viewers can't see it, but there are seams on this aircraft that look like it's basically been pieced together, glued together. There are fasteners there, but they are different than what was done in the past. That's right. You know, the, again, the tolerances, the precision tolerances that we're able to, to hold using our machinery here allows us to install these fasteners to where they're very, very tight tolerances and very flush to the surface of the aircraft. And that is so, for what purpose? Partly stealth? Is Ultimately, right? this was, will support the stealth characteristics, characteristics of the aircraft. All right. Uh, Robert, uh, there are other uh, interesting uh, aspects of this plane. If we could, I'm going to ask you to, to sit tight here. We are going to learn more about the Joint Strike Fighter and how it's made here in Fort Worth, Texas, coming up in just a moment. Stick with us here on Bloomberg. More on the Joint Strike Fighter after this short break. I'm Peter Cook back here in Fort Worth, Texas on the factory floor for the Joint Strike Fighter. Lockheed Martin's plant here makes the F-35. You're looking one behind me. An unprecedented up-front look, up-close look at this plane. I'm joined by Robert Powell. He's the director of production operations for Lockheed Martin here. This is your floor. Uh, let's continue our conversation about this plane and its manufacturing process. Right now, how long does it take to build one of these? Well, right now, looking at this jet AF-3 right here, started about 18 months ago to get it to this point. At full rate production, it'll take about five months to get it to this point. Also, if you look at the end of the moving line, today the line is moving at about five inches an hour. At five full, inches an hour. Five inches an hour. To understand that that does represent progress. That's right, it does. At full rate production, we'll move at approximately 50 inches per hour, or about 30 feet for every shift worked. 
Yeah. The Secretary of Defense was here trying to gauge progress today, how you guys are doing. Talk to me about the biggest obstacles right now to making sure this plane is on budget and on time. Well, right now, as you can see, we're, the, the factory is undergoing a major transformation. We've removed over a quarter of a million feet of concrete. We are in the process of reconfiguring the factory, preparing for the one-a-day rate. But I would say, from a technical standpoint, there have been very, very few technical problems thus far with the, with the aircraft. The biggest thing we have to do is to ensure that our supply chain continues to mature at a pace to support our one-a-day rate. And today, they're well on their way. One-a-day is the ultimate goal here. Build one of these in one-a-day, get it out the door. It's going to serve the Navy, the Air Force, the Marine Corps. That makes this different. This is a multi-service platform. That's right. It'll replace uh, frontline fighters for all three services as well as uh, our uh, uh, partner countries. All right. Well, we thank you very much for the tour again. And up close look at the uh, fighter of the future for the U.S. military, the F-35 here in Fort Worth, Texas. Lori, we'll send it back to you. Cool stuff. Peter Cook, many thanks.